everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. As I mentioned in the previous episode of this series, after a nine-year journey, the New Horizons spacecraft reached Pluto on July 14. The New Horizons flyby gave us our most detailed look ever, not only at Pluto, but at the Pluto system, which also includes its largest moon, Charon, and its four smaller moons, Nix, Styx, Kerberos, and Hydra. The image you're seeing now is a composite made from two separate images, approximating the relative size and separation of Pluto and Charon. In addition to the gorgeous full-frame images of Pluto and Charon that many of us have been obsessing over this past week, we got some great close-ups of the surface of Pluto. NASA used those close-ups to create this animated flyover of Pluto's Norgay Mountains, informally named for Tenzing Norgay, who summited Mount Everest with Edmund Hillary, and Sputnik Plain, informally named for Earth's first artificial satellite. NASA will be collecting the data from the New Horizons flyby for the next 16 months. And beyond Pluto, there are plans to use New Horizons to study one or two other objects in the Kuiper Belt. Even with its primary mission completed, this spacecraft may not be through expanding our horizons. Next up, researchers in the Netherlands have boosted the efficiency of a different kind of solar cell. We generally think of solar cells as using sunlight to produce electricity, but researchers at Eindhoven University of Technology have built the most promising prototype yet of a solar fuel cell a solar cell that uses sunlight to make hydrogen gas, which can then be used as a clean energy source. It's been possible for some time to use the electricity produced by existing solar cells to harvest hydrogen from water, but this can be expensive. The Eindhoven researchers have created a solar fuel cell that uses a grid of gallium phosphide nanowires to both convert sunlight into electricity and use that electricity to split water molecules and harvest hydrogen all in one. These solar fuel cells can't yet match the yield of the old hydrogen generating process, but they are much cheaper. If the researchers can match that low cost to a high yield of hydrogen, then the effect on the still developing solar fuel industry could be significant. This study is published in the journal Nature Communications. And finally, researchers in Portland, Oregon, have discovered a new treatment that offers relief to those suffering from tinnitus. Researchers at VA Portland Medical Center and Oregon Health and Science University recently conducted a study on tinnitus patients where over half of the participants reported a significant improvement in their tinnitus symptoms after receiving transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS. The participants received TMS targeted at their brain's auditory cortex for 10 consecutive days. Of the 32 participants, 18 reported significant improvement in their tinnitus symptoms that lasted for at least six months. People with tinnitus hear persistent ringing or hissing sounds. These sounds can be disabling in extreme cases as the distraction that results is constant. Tinnitus affects 45 million Americans, is the number one service-connected disability reported to the Department of Veterans Affairs, and yet there are no proven effective treatments capable of alleviating the symptoms. If this TMS treatment turns out to be the first such proven effective treatment, that will be very good news indeed. This study is published in the journal JAMA Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery. New Horizons beams back stunning images of Pluto, scientists invent a promising solar fuel cell, and researchers find what they hope to be the first effective treatment for tinnitus. That's the good news. How are you, Adi? Yeah, I feel like I don't ask that enough.